All right, so I told you guys at the beginning of this infrastructure negotiation process that moderate Democrats, quote unquote moderate Democrats, even though they're far right conservative extremists, um, we're going to try to sabotage this dual track process that is underway. So you have the bipartisan one that Democrats insisted on working with Republicans on in the infrastructure process. And, and this is really just a giant privatization scheme. It's not a good infrastructure bill, but the idea was that they sold to people was, well, we're going to have this bipartisan one that we work with Republicans on, and that's going to be watered down and shitty. And then we're also going to have this partisan one and we're going to pass them at the same time and the partisan one will have a lot of those things that we would like in the bill um, and we'll be able to pass a much more substantial bill in tandem so we're going to be able to get this uh, bipartisan win and simultaneously pass the things that we want well i told you guys from the beginning this process was completely pointless and was always going to result in what we have right now and it seems like my prediction at the beginning of this that moderate democrats were going to try to sabotage the partisan bill uh is immediately coming to uh, fruition right now so let's go ahead and read this letter from uh, Manu Raju here reporting that moderate Democrats, moderate, moderate House Democrats are raising concerns about the Democrats budget plans that would pave the way for passing the $3.5 trillion package and are also calling on Pelosi to give an immediate vote on the infrastructure bill and to not tie it to the reconciliation package per letter from source. So basically what they're saying is, and I'm going to read some of these, uh, some of the parts of this letter. Basically what they're saying is we want to pass the bipartisan one as a standalone bill and then that will give us an opportunity to go water down and sabotage the 3.5 trillion partisan bill. So it's just pure sabotage that they're trying to undertake here. So uh, hopefully Speaker Pelosi uh, doesn't actually fall for this. And uh, I'm honestly not confident at all that she won't because she's Speaker Pelosi. So let's go ahead and read some of this. So. She, they start off saying, Dear Speaker Pelosi, we applaud the work of the bipartisan group of senators and the Biden administration for reaching a final agreement on the bipartisan infrastructure framework. This framework has the support of the Bipartisan Problem Solvers Caucus. What a dumb fucking name. 29 Democrats and 29 Republicans. It proves that Congress can, can work together across the aisle in both chambers to address our nation's most pressing needs. No, it doesn't. This is just a fucking lie, okay? It's a $1 trillion bill. It has like uh, less than $500 billion in new spending in it. The American Society of Civil Engineers, the actual experts on this issue, say we need at least bare minimum $1 trillion per year in order to get our infrastructure up to a grade of about a B plus. OK, so for them to say this is the Problem Solvers Caucus coming together to solve the problem of our crumbling infrastructure. No, it's not. You're not even coming close to the mark. It's uh, less than $500 billion stretched over like five to 10 years. This is not even anything close to a problem solving undertaking that you're doing here but they just lie about that solving the most the nation's most pressing needs and they continue as soon as the senate completes its work we must bring this bipartisan infrastructure bill to the house floor for a standalone vote this once in a century investment think about that this once in a century investment once in a century they think we should be spending 500 billion dollars over the course of a century on our fucking infrastructure the main thing that our country uses to operate on meanwhile over that same century guess how much they'll try to spend on the, uh, the military budget it would probably be uh, because i know that over the same period over this next 10 year period we're going to spend roughly 10 trillion dollars on our military so stretch that over a century that's nearly a hundred trillion to 500 billion ratio on what they think we should spend on our military versus our infrastructure okay that's how ridiculous this is this once in a, a century uh, investment that they're talking about here um we must pass this once in a, once in a century investment it deserves its own consideration without regard to other legislation so here they go they say down here separately as we begin the reconciliation process we have concerns about the specific components of that potential package talking about the 3.5 trillion dollar one before the house adopts a budget reconcil a budget re budget re resolution members of congress should be able to review a detailed scope and spending levels and revenue raisers these specifics are crucial particularly given the combined threat of rising inflation national debt and the trillions recently and appropriately allocated for the COVID-19 emergency. So just completely fabricated issues here. Talking about inflation, we don't have a problem with inflation. A lot of the reasons why we've had price increases recently have become uh, have be been because of uh, supply side problems. Because of the pandemic, we had everything shut down. And then as things start to ramp up, it's much harder to get access to a lot of those materials. So there's been rising inflation in some sectors of the economy. There has not been a problem with generalized inflation. Nobody is saying that. And they just talk about that as if that's the reality and the national debt are you fucking kidding me the national debt every single one of these republicans that's signing on to these this uh, bipartisan framework voted for the trump tax cuts 
every single one of these voted to uh, increase the military budget. You're, you don't talk about the national debt when it comes to those things. You don't talk about the national debt when it comes to raising the military budget. You don't talk about it when it comes to giving handouts to uh, large corporations and billionaires. You don't talk about the national debt. They don't give a shit about the national debt, okay? Nobody does. Nobody does. Because it's not a problem in the same way that like your household debt would be a problem. With things like infrastructure, it pays for itself over time. You're making investments that have a return on investment, right? You would think that these capitalists would be able to understand that concept. When you invest in uh, infrastructure, it directly expands the economy, it creates new jobs, it improves efficiency. It is a, an economic boost. It is not a cost that just you throw money out the window and you lose it. That's not how this works. Infrastructure pays for itself over time, and yet they're talking about the fucking national debt. So here comes the, uh, the actual important part. Are progressives going to be willing to stand up to them on this? So here's what AOC had to say. If moderates want to blow up the infrastructure deal, that's on them. I know that this is tough for some to understand, but the U.S. is more than a handful of suburb, uh, suburb communities outside, uh, outside them aren't disposable. And just because something is bipartisan doesn't mean it's good. Look at the Wall Street bailouts. Exactly. Uh, war is bipartisan. Tax cuts for the rich were bipartisan. Wall Street bailouts were bipartisan. Fossil fuel giveaways were and are bipartisan. Just because something is bipartisan doesn't make it intrinsically good for people or worthy of passage. And I'm going to go ahead and fucking like that tweet because that's a good tweet. Substance matters. It does matter. And this bipartisan bill is dog shit. Okay. The only reason why it was worth even considering passing this bill is because it was going to be attached to the $3.5 trillion one, which has more substantial things in it. That's the only reason, right? So if you're going to disconnect them, then fuck you, go home. Okay. If you want to play this game, we can play this game, right? Because everybody wants to invest in infrastructure. Infrastructure is extremely popular. So if moderate Democrats want to blow up this infrastructure bill because they don't want to invest in what? You think there's too much child care? You think there's too much uh, uh, nursing home care? What, what is it? What are these, uh, what do they call it? Soft infrastructure things that you're going to come out and tell the public that you don't support. Go ahead and do it. Do it. We welcome this argument. We will win this argument because the American people overwhelmingly support the policies that are included in the $3.5 trillion infrastructure bill. So this is a fight that I'm glad that they're taking on. Um, and here from Amandair Jones, also just adding, no, no. And he's exactly right. God damn, no, fuck you, right? I mean, this is exactly the attitude that they need to be having in this moment, right? So hopefully they can actually stick to this. They're willing to stand their ground. And there are it's not just the squad. It's not just Mondaire Jones and Jamal Bowman and Cori Bush. There is the uh, substantial portion of the House Progressive Caucus um, that is standing behind them in this attitude. So hopefully they actually have a plan in place uh, to take this fight publicly, go on all the media networks, blame the moderates because it is their fault, and explain these things that you just said. War is bipartisan. Tax breaks are bipartisan. Somehow, you know, it, it, there's this idea that everything that's bipartisan is necessarily perfect and good. No, we have to pass this in a dual track way. We well, committed to this plan. Stick to the fucking plan and pass it in a dual track way. And if you don't, then expect that three point five trillion dollars to turn into something like uh, one trillion dollars and it's going to be another shitty bill. So that's what needs to happen. Hopefully they stick to their guns.